Hey out there, thanks for tuning in. You know what we're gonna be talking about today? Is offers. Putting in offers, receiving offers on real estate. Yesterday, a friend of mine received a verbal offer. Mm. I was gonna talk about the pros and cons of verbal offers, but there's really no pros, only cons. If you get anything out of this video, it is do not take a verbal offer. I don't know how you would take it because it's really not enforceable anyway, but don't even talk about price with somebody. You could just be nice and you could just say, hey, listen, put it down in writing. Blame it on me. Say, hey, you know, I see this guy, Harry, and he says, I shouldn't talk price or take a verbal offer. So just put it in writing and then we'll discuss it after that. Because it leads to hurt feelings, leads to confusion, and we don't want to play games. Remember, we only want to do win-win deals. If you play games, there has to be a loser. I don't want there to be a loser. I think both people could walk away from a transaction feeling good about it. It's tempting. It's really tempting to start talking about price and stuff when you have a piece of property on the market. I mean, you want to sell it. Your, your, your head's already where you're going. And, you know, somebody comes over and says, oh, I'm interested in your property. In this case, I'm talking about the situation when I was talking about with my friend. A neighbor came over and knows what, my, knows what my friend's gonna put it on the market for next month and then offered him a little bit less. And I think it was sarcastic when I said to my friend, well, how good of a neighbor could he be if he offered you less than what you're gonna put it on the market for? In other words, you don't even have it on the market yet. You didn't even put a feeler out there. It could be worth more. And you got this guy coming over offering less. <clears throat> anyway, you don't wanna take a verbal offer. So. If you do come across a situation and you could come up with a, a bunch of different reasons that you don't want to take a verbal offer, past experiences, blame it on me or whatever, but you're going to want to take a written offer. You're going to want a contract or a written offer when you do this because it's not hard to do. There's so many different formats or, 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 or different things out there that you can put offers in with. There's the official real estate contract that realtors use, but it doesn't have to be that formal. I'd recommend it, it's pretty easy to use. But you want it to be in you want it to be in writing. What do you want to look for when you get an offer, when you get a written contract? For me, one of the first places I go to, it's right in the beginning of it, is well the price obviously, but if you're good with the price, then what do you look for? I want the biggest deposit as possible. Another another term for deposit is earnest money. You want somebody to have as much skin in the game as possible because Buyer's remorse happens way more than I want it to. So with people having as much money up front with you as possible, it gives them more oomph to continue with the transaction. So if you're selling a house for $400,000 and somebody offers to give you a $1,000 deposit, you want to say, mm, that's not good. You want at least $10,000. People are going to have to come up with that for, for down payment and closing costs. $10,000 is a drop in a bucket on a $400,000 house. Timing and dates. This is something you want to pay attention to. You want to, obviously, you want to see when a closing date is. But what I'm talking about here is how far out is the contingency for inspections? Typically, it's 10 days. If I can get it less than that as a seller, I'm going to. But I don't want to scare anybody away. So you got 10 days after attorney review for inspections to be done. And then if the buyer doesn't like what they see, they go walk. But you don't want your house out there for a month and still have the buyer be able to walk away from it after they get an inspection. The mortgage contingency. Typically, people are going to use a mortgage to buy your house. And there's going to be a line in that contract that says, buyer A has to get their mortgage commitment by such and such a day. And sometimes, because don't forget, the buyers have an attorney and a realtor also. They're working on behalf of the buyer and they want to push that out as far as possible in order to protect the buyer. But as a seller, you don't want these contingencies out there too long, like I said. So if somebody comes in today and it gets out of attorney review in three days from now, then a typical mortgage commitment should be maybe 14 days later. I have seen 21 days because of the market that we're in. But don't let them extend it out for 30 days or for whatever. Because like I said, buyer's remorse, it's real. After people get home and they put in that written offer and they're all excited and they crack open a bottle of wine and him and her are sharing it, then the next day they wake up and are we doing the right thing? Is that the right school district for the kids? I don't know. Do you know the neighbors? 
that street looked kind of busy. Did you see the crack in the wall? I'm trying to be funny here, but at the same time, that's what happens. It doesn't happen with me because I, I want the property as is, so I know what I'm getting into, but buyers are funny like that. You could be picky. So, what did you get from today? Do not take a verbal offer. Don't even discuss price with somebody that comes in if you're selling your property. Have them put it down in writing. You know how quick that, that could be done. It could be done really quickly. They don't want to spend the time, and they weren't serious anyway. Until next time.